Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. My day job, I work at Myrick O'Connell, also offices here in Westboro. There are about 20 of us here. Um, and I do nothing but elder law, but the goal of this show is not to talk about law, but rather my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And in Westboro, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to move away, meet with their kids. They don't want to go to Hawaii. They want to be here. So the question is, who do you need to know? Uh, people like the folks that we've got today and, wh and what programs you need to know about um, while you're here so that you can be connected uh, in Westboro and kind of know what's going on and kind of adjust your lives accordingly. Uh, so my co-host, most of you do know, and that's my friend Shelby Marshall, who's been a selectman now for, God, two years, something, a long time, right? Yeah, I don't see any gray hair yet, but you're starting oh. to age. So, and, and, and so she knows everybody. So she invites these great guests, including the one that we have today that we've seen before, but last yeah. time it was live. So please forgive us. We're all, we're all zooming around today. So Shelby, whom do we have today? Yes. Good morning, Arthur. Great to see you as always. Uh, today's guest is our superintendent of schools, Amber Bach. Amber, welcome back to Frank and Mary. Thank you. I, I'm so excited that you guys invited me to come and talk. Yeah, well, so Amber certainly is not a uh, stranger to the screen, uh, particularly these days. Uh, she has been a regular guest on uh, Westboro TV. She actually recently um, uh, went through uh, a Ask the Superintendent or Ask Amber, I can't remember what it was called, by uh, uh, Karen Henderson, uh, and Amber sat down for I think it was like two and a half hours of a QA and a session um, where Amber was sort of said, ask me any question uh, that the community has sent in um, about the reopening of schools. So um, there was a recent uh, meeting on Monday um, by the school committee uh, where a vote was taken. I thought it was timely to have uh, Amber on the show. Many of our viewers may have watched that meeting, but uh, really felt like, um, you know, we always talk about issues that are relevant to Frank and Mary, but Frank and Mary may also be raising grandkids who are going through the schools and they may or may not be watching that school committee meeting. So wanted to have Amber come and talk to our viewers today about what are the things that Frank and Mary need to know if they've got kids that are, um, they're preparing to return to school. So Amber, welcome. So good to have you. Thank you. And I, I just want to acknowledge too, we do have such a vibrant um, group of Frank and Mary type citizens living in Westboro who are either caring and supporting children who live in Westboro or in other districts around the nation or in the area. So I'm certainly a representative superintendent for you today to talk about the things you're wondering about when you're thinking about your children, your grandchildren, and you know, you've got your children who are under stress because they're gonna be sending their children back to school and they might be calling you and how do you support them? As well as really thinking about wherever your grandchildren are, um, I can answer questions related to kind of both Westboro, but, but how the public school systems are really trying to be supportive to come back safely. So I would certainly take your guiding questions, uh, Shelby and Arthur, the things you think are relevant um, and give kind of an, uh, an overview that I think represents near and far for your citizens that are watching. Great. Excellent. Well, let's start with the most basic, which is if you could bring everyone up to speed with the vote that was taken on Monday and where we stand and in your answer, um, um, how the um, uh, reopening will look for the first couple of weeks. Sure. So uh, like many districts in Massachusetts, um, the focus that we have is to return students to school in a hybrid model of instruction. And that is basically lowering the overall number of students that come to school on any given day into smaller groups. So we basically took the complete student body and broke them in half and they come on alternative days. So students are working some days away, further away at home settings or, or care settings. They might be with a grandparent during the day and they'll be doing schoolwork that's been given to them. And then on the opposite day, they are coming into school to get in-person instruction from their teachers um, before they are then in another away day. Here in Westboro, we also decided that the safest and most supportive thing to do for our faculty and our families was to move slowly to kind of grade up to that 
um, hybrid model. So we introduced kind of a phased start where we're really starting remote for the first week with, so if you're a grandparent and you're caring for a child, the first week in Westboro is going to be all remote and the teacher will be live with them, helping them warm up for the start of the year. And our goal there was really having them be able to think about um, building community, working without masks face to face for their teacher to introduce themselves and to build some whole class unity before we started staging in small groups. And then the next two weeks moving forward, entering in with small groups of students until we reach a full hybrid model. I Great. think it's also important too, just to acknowledge that that's really after a lot of shared compromise and discussion with faculty and families, and we feel good about where we are. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about, since the first week starts remote, one of the things we talk a lot about on Frank and Mary is technology. And the reason why we feel this show is a particular value to Frank and Mary and uh, residents of Westboro is that it's pretty low tech, right? So you kind of turn on cable TV, maybe you do stream it from your laptop or your iPad, but it's pretty low tech. So um, how are the schools preparing for students on um, the technology aspect? And if I'm Frank and Mary and I'm like, oh God, I got all this technology to deal with to help yeah. my student, you know, how do, how do I interact with the school? Who do I go to for help? Let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. because, these, because these people have been getting help from their kids, from those students with their technology. Exactly. So like, yeah. Now all yeah. of a sudden they're actually having to deal with this stuff, right? Yeah. Well, if there's something that I'm immensely proud of, I'll speak about Westboro first. And then if you have a, a student that's far um, that you're supporting and you want to help the parent figure it out. Um, well, in Westboro, I'm immensely proud of the fact that our technology team has had a lot of direct contact with anybody who's caring for a child. We see family as anybody caring for a child. So if you're a, if you're a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, a guardian, anyone, inclusive of all, and you need our help to make sure that you're the person that you're caring for has access and can manage their technology, you can call the school and you can call the school your child attends or you can email, but calling if that's what you're comfortable with. You can get lots of access numbers um, just in the phone book, whatever works for you and or online and reach out to the schools and we'll, we'll get you connected to who you need to help you um, answer calls and questions to get the technology working. We work virtually with you and sometimes we can even have you come in distance if we need to, to help train you. Um, we're here to help families be successful with their students. In an away model, if you have a, a child, you know, you're a grown mm -hmm. child who is trying to call you and like, mom, this is so hard. And well, you can say, you know what, sweetie, call the school, explain your needs and ask what kind of supports are available for you. All districts want their students to be successful. And the best thing you can do is reach out to your school and get to a technology or a secretary person that can give you some support. Excellent. Excellent. Well, and, and Arthur, you made a great point. Um, and I know it's certainly the case in many households where um, the students are so adept at using technology that there are really few and far glitches. I think it's it's uh, sometimes they're teaching the uh, adult learner on what it is that they're doing. But I, you know, when when we have families that want to be supportive of their student, particularly at the, with those at home learning days um, uh, when they're not in the classroom, uh, you know, families want to be engaged and understand um, where their student is and how to help them progress through uh, the curriculum. Exactly. Don't struggle alone. You know, a lot of times we can get somebody on the call with you who will interact with the student and you right. to, to figure it out. So let's transition a little bit to safety um, because this applies to those that are here in Westboro as, uh, as well as those who may be uh, caring for a grandchild who is in a neighboring town who's going back to school. So how is Westboro handling kind of the safety for both obviously faculty, but families? Um, um, so let's talk, you know, um, masks, um, hand washing, mm -hmm. all those practices. I know there's a whole manual about it that's been developed and, and a consultant that was involved. Yeah, there's so many layers here. You know, if you are somebody who is um, caring for a child, or of course, all of us as loving families have people across an age spectrum. We all we all have aunts and uncles and family that are um, older that we want to protect. And if 
in those listening to the show, you're thinking about, will I be able to see my grandchild more once they're back in a school setting? Does that increase my risk and how? And then also, what are the ways that the schools are working? So you want to understand what's going on at the school mm -hmm. so that you feel safe to continue the interactions you've been able to establish in your family. Everything about this work is centered on working collaboratively together to set up a bunch of different mitigating factors. It's a set of cleaning protocols. It's having fewer people in the hybrid model. It's spacing people out appropriately. It's mask wearing appropriately and at the right times. It's making sure that the sanitation and hygiene available is very well planned as well as then setting up instructional models where we can have personal but appropriate time with students while maintaining everybody's risk as low as possible. So that we're sending you home a child that we think can return home and with the proper hand washing and mask wearing, come home safely to you and be able to continue interacting. Um, we really have in-depth protocols. We have ordered thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of um, protective equipment, masks as backups. Families are supposed to send their child with a mask that they're comfortable with, they feel good in. And, you know, we can make sure it meets general criteria that it fits well and that it does the proper level of protection. Um, if a child needs a mask, we'll provide it. We'll have backups at school. Um, we have gloves available for the protocols when they're needed and a ton of sanitation guidelines to make sure that our buildings are clean and surfaces are well protected. Our buses as well have a cleaning protocol between every tier of moving. Again, they're spacing no more than 25 students on a bus spaced out, windows open, proper ventilation, and then sanitation between runs. All students on the bus will wear masks. So. We really believe that the care and protection of children, families, and faculty, we've done everything we can to set up some good protocols. Great. Um, just on masks, I know it was a question and I'm not sure where it stands. At one point, folks had asked about you know, um, bandanas. Are there any kind of requirements? It's probably in the the, the yeah. rollout, um, but if you could just kind of let folks know, give, give our Frank and Mary some guidance as to what their kids can go to school with. Sure. Way, we, have, we have some Frank and Mary masks, by the way. If, if oh, dude, I want one. I yeah. want one. I but they've got it. the little, but they're, it's their picture, but they've got the little Do you mask. have a mug, though? Do you have a mug, too? Right. <laughs> I, I, I think now that I'm returning from my second visit and would like to be a regular, that um, <laughs> you should, you know, maybe get me some gear. Um, <laughs> so in terms of uh, the mask wearing, there's evolving protocols in some early mask studies. And again, we're using the Board of Health as our guiding um, anchor with the best um, guidance and we will follow it. Also, the discussion around, I think, we would encourage like not wearing bandanas, but we won't turn away a child who comes to school. We might upgrade their mask mask choice and say, you know, we're going to provide a couple masks for you. Here's one that's a better choice. A bandana leaves the bottom open and we really would prefer you not do that. Sure. The discussion around gators is evolving and mm. Westboro Public Schools hasn't finalized their discussion on that. I think that the protocol is best mask is kind of that surgical fit kind of mask. Sure. Um, but we're also trying to be as flexible as possible as long as we feel it meets those key protocols. We definitely will not uh, encourage bandana wearing. It, it's not uh, protective enough, but uh, we'll make sure that all the handbooks and guidance to families is clear. No child will be turned away from school ever in Westboro. We will give them what they need to attend school safely and make sure that it's done respectfully and with care. Great. So, Shelby, can I just ask a yep, couple please. of things kind of related to this? It's, it's sort of your show too. No, no, but I know it. This is really interesting. I, I, I guess I'm, um, I'm, uh, um, I think these are kind of related questions. So one, you would just refer to the the kind of you know, people say, being safe at home. Can you talk about test the testing, any test the testing that might be required of kids before they come to school, about any testing that's going to be occurring at school, those things. Sure. And then the kind of related question, I think we've already seen kind of at the college level, some people it's kind of opened up and then things started going south. And, and so the people were, you know, re, re, you know, retracing their steps to some mm -hmm. extent. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about how, how you, I'm sure you've, you've anticipated that and, and how, how you're thinking about 
what those criteria would be regarding what continues to be safe. And then if it gets less safe, then what do you do? Sure. Let me answer that and we'll kind of work backwards and make sure just nudge me, Arthur, if I drop one of those questions. Um, so we had to design a series of opening models so that we could move seamlessly um, in and out of different ones. So we would go from hybrid to full remote should disease indicators at the state level or the town level or a building level move us in that direction. And we have a set of benchmark data points that we'll be tracking daily and making sure that they're available at the Board of Health level and transparently with families as well, so that they know we're all invested in this and working as a team. And should we need to switch protocols from hybrid to fully remote, would do so with the guidance of the Board of Health and the school committee working in tandem. So the model is designed to be fluid as needed. I just wanna comment on some of the differences and I'm not judging the college settings and I, and I, I think they're all working to do the best they can. I think we all are. I just wanna be clear that the, that the colleges have large gatherings of students in unsupervised settings and living together in unsupervised settings and in large groups um, in ways that schools do not. And I think that the circumstances are different. And we think that the uh, implementation of the school-based level is very different. It's just a much more controlled environment. Um, uh, we all know that college is a highly social environment. And as adults, they are guiding their time with their own expectations. And I think that's the challenge that colleges are working with. We have handbooks, protocols, and a lot more controlled environment just by the nature of the age and how public school runs. Um, so I think it's different, but certainly we have to be as nimble and responsive. Um, and then you asked something else. About beginning. testing. About oh, kind of thank how you. testing so, plays, in, plays into yeah. any of this. Yeah. So we'll follow the guidelines uh, set by the mass uh, guidelines for travel, testing, quarantining. There's a whole set of implementation protocols for how to respond for both students and faculty. Um, should there be a, a case, symptoms, there's protocols for all of it. And we apply the testing protocol against those other, um, like we're not doing particularly public schooling and then many colleges not, haven't moved at a mass, mass kind of a mass testing. Um, approach, but symptomatic or related to travel. So um, for example, I traveled to Ohio for family matters and returned and did my test and submitted it to the Board of Health. I did my, my drive-in test and uh, supported the Board of Health and then could unquarantine. That's really the protocol we'll follow. Uh, I think certainly this summer, as an example, Arthur, we ran a distance summer school program, and um, we had several students and then a couple of faculty who got tested, all came back negative, and we used it applied against symptomatic or exposure questions or concerns, and then the testing was applied, the quarantine was put in place, and in all cases, that was all negative. So that's how we plan on approaching the testing. If we got something different, guidelines wise from the board of health we would would change that protocol but i think they're pleased with the plan right now boy that's a, just a ton of work that's just a ton of work so yeah thank you know thank you for that and now shelby i, I know we're, we're a little close on time but if you got any final questions and then i'd like you to talk for a few minutes about what you're whom you're anticipating next sure. week and it's just wonderful to see amber bach again yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Amber, just uh, one quick question um, regarding curriculum. So, um, just my understanding is regular curriculum, regular grades, um, all of that. Um, the anticipate, the expectation is, is that this is a full learning year, um, but the you know where we're learning is the the difference between you mm -hmm. know traditional experience. Yes, you've said it well. That is exactly right. Regular bell day schedule, um, full curriculum, and typical grading expectations that, that match Westboro Public Schools. That's true across all of Massachusetts. If you have a grandchild who's being educated in Massachusetts, that's the expectation for all districts. And whether a child is working close or far, in person or independently, they will have a full day schedule supported with instructional planning.
So Great. even if the grandchild tells the grandparent, I'm on, I'm on pass fail now. That, no, that, they have they that, have that, any that, they that. have a full day, and <laughs> and again, don't suffer in alone. five and days. In if five you days. are if you are a caregiver of someone who's school aged, and you need our support, um, you call uh, and speak with um, the school, and we'll give you what you need in terms of information. But full school day, bell to bell. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I was just thinking about how all the college grades are going to go up now because of the <laughs> limitations. But that's for a different show. So that is, that's a whole different show. I might have I might have done better if I were going to college in COVID. Because yeah. <laughs> you had to stay in. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's just transition. Amber, stay on. But we're going to just uh, transition. Um, quick update. Um, our next week's guest on Frank and Mary will be yet another returning guest. We all know her, Kelly Petralia, who's the executive director of Westboro Connects. She's gonna come on and talk about a new program Westboro Connects is organizing. It's a pen pal program, and it's intended to connect um, those that are 50 to 69 with those that, who are 70 and above in a traditional pen pal uh, kind of uh, program. Um, and so Arthur, we've talked about the isolation that COVID has brought on. Love the program, love the idea. They're looking for um, participants. So Kelly will tell us all about that. So very excited to have her back on. I am so um, excited to be a pen pal. I can hardly wait. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Arthur, see, you and I could be pen pals too. We be well, pen pals. I, I, That's right. I'm old enough. I'm old I enough. I can't. Sorry. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm just bringing the program to you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I also just want to um, call uh, attention to uh, last night's Board of Selectmen meeting. We had a great presentation. It starts right at the beginning of the meeting, so you don't have, even have to scroll through to find it. But um, uh, CMRCP, um, uh, which is Central Mass Regional Planning, came and presented um, the uh, Municipal Vulnerability Grant uh, Program, uh, which is all about uh, climate uh, resiliency and preparedness. Um, our viewers may be very interested in watching. It was uh, probably about 45 minutes, but um, talked about the work that the town has done um, to become a, uh, a certified town. 85% of Massachusetts uh, cities and towns are uh, certified through this program. And by becoming certified, we um, are eligible for uh, grants that will help to do things like you know, prepare or, excuse, you know, prepare for uh, bad weather, um, repair culverts, you know, address flooding, et cetera. So um, our viewers may be interested in, in watching that in particular. And um, also of interest, um, our town clerk uh, talked about the upcoming town elections and all the work that they are doing, which is just a tremendous amount, um, given state primaries, early voting, mail-in voting, et cetera. And I would direct folks to um, go to our website or call the town clerk's office if you have any questions. Um, one thing I learned is that if you are doing mail-in voting, uh, you can actually go on to our town website and check to see if your vote has been received um, once you actually do vote. So I didn't realize that tracking was in process for those that were worried about the integrity of the system. It was certainly reassurance from what I heard. Um, and... Um, um, we will be having a special town meeting and the date of uh, fall town meeting is to be determined, but we're leaning toward an, toward an early November uh, date, but more to come on that. And, and I think, you know, once again, we really tried to, to morph this show into being about, about senior issues, but also about issues that seniors are concerned about. So I'm sure that we'll be seeing folks between now and that special town meeting regarding issues that you think shall be, are really, of, are, you know, really of concern so that folks can stay, stay tuned. So, Thank you so much, Shelby, for doing this, for bringing great people like Amber Bach. It's the way that I met Amber Bach was through you. Thank you very much, Amber, for coming back. And, uh, you know, we'll get you a mug and, and we'll look forward <laughs> to seeing you in the future. Folks, thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoying, you're enjoying these shows. Uh, and we'll see you in, in, in next week uh, in the next episode of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Bye.